Mr. Medellin here, guys. Uh, Mr. M again, and uh, I like the little heart with the radiology with Mr. M. And again, guys, we're studying the radiological sciences. So I know we're just getting started with the videos, but we're following the course content for the material. Uh, we'll be doing radius protection. We'll be doing patient care, lawn ethics. Uh, again, we'll be doing videos on all the content. And again, the contents relate to the ART exam that you know our students are going to be taking. And I'm hoping that you know any radiological tech uh, student can go ahead and benefit from this as well. So today we're doing a video again. Uh, we're talking about uh, interactions with matter in a previous one, but uh, we're going to focus on photoelectric and Compton. All right. So the two most common interactions. We might sneak sneak coherent in there a little bit, but we're going to focus on photoelectric and Compton. So let's go ahead and start with the one that always is going to happen. Let's do Compton first. Okay. So Compton, Compton effect, or Compton, I'm going to go ahead and say Compton scatter. How about that? Okay, so it's an interaction with matter. So I'm going to write this here. Interaction with matter. Okay, so the little C with the line, I just, I don't know why I did that, but probably all the years you've seen prescriptions, but you should know, with is going to be that little line with the C. So interactions with matter, all right? We have Compton photoelectric, then we have coherent. Those happen in the x-ray room. And then we have two other ones that are not gonna happen in a diagnostic x-ray room, and that's gonna be pair production and photo disintegration. So we're not gonna talk about those because those aren't gonna happen in an x-ray room. Um, we're gonna talk about, again, Compton and photoelectric. Again, but there's five total, okay? So you can find this in chapter, I have the book here, chapter 13. All right, so chapter 13 in the Carlton Adler book, if you have that. Uh, if you're referencing another textbook like Bouchon, then again, it'll be in a different section, but you can find it under interactions with matter, okay? So we're gonna start with Compton scatter or Compton effect. So let's go ahead and draw our x-ray too. All right, so uh, a lot of the students, they, they figure out how to draw the x-ray tube really well, you know, from me drawing it all the time, right? So here's your x-ray tube. You're gonna have x-ray radiation coming down. So I just wanna go over this again. It's known as primary radiation. It's exiting the x-ray tube through the lead shutters, the collimator. It's also known as the useful beam, right? Useful beam or useful radiation. And the other one that starts with a P, this is the one that people forget. All right, what's it gonna be? I'm pretending there's students in the room right here. So, what's it gonna be, everyone? It's gonna be positive radiation, or positive beam. So, positive, primary, and useful are all the same type of, of terms used for the radiation exiting the x-ray tube itself. Now, so we have this primary radiation, and it's gonna strike the patient, correct? So now, it's gonna go inside the patient, and it's gonna interact with the atoms of our body. So remember, we call this, the, the model that we use is Niels Bohr model, right? Bohr's model. <laughs> so this is very easy to use. So now we're gonna have the, the x-rays interact with the patient. So it's going into the tissue, correct? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase this here like this. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna draw a big atom here. Okay. I know it's not symmetrical, all right, so, but it's going to work. So, we're going to have this, what's called an incident photon. An incident photon, it's going to strike, it's going to strike, let's say this is the nucleus, this is the K shell, this is the L shell, let's say this is the M, right, this is M. Let's say the incident photon is going to strike the outer shell electron, let's say in the M shell. So what's gonna happen is that electron is gonna be ejected and this is known as a recoil electron. So the byproduct here now is a recoil electron. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna produce a scattered photon. So now we have a scattered photon that releases energy and the scattered photon is known as secondary radiation, all right? So the scattered photon is a form of secondary radiation. That's why I started off by going over primary radiation. So secondary radiation is your scattered photon. 
So the interaction that dominates in every procedure that you do in regards to x-ray and fluoro, and even in CT, you're gonna end up with Compton interaction. So the Compton interaction, again, you have an ejected outer shell electron. So I'm gonna write it on this side, okay? So you have an ejected outer shell electron. It's usually going to be M N O P Q. All right. So you have an ejected outer shell electron. You're going to produce a recoil electron and a scattered photon. Now, scatter is not our friend. All right. Scatter is the chief danger to techs and anybody else in the exam room. Correct. So we have to learn how to protect ourselves from scatter. There's certain distances that we have to be at. There's certain angles that we have to be at from the patient. There's certain protective apparel that we have to protect us from scatter. We're gonna save that for radiation protection next, next quarter. So, a recoil electron is produced and a scattered photon. This is secondary radiation. So it has no diagnostic value. It has no diagnostic value all it does is produce noise on digital systems. Back in the days we had film, produces fog, right? And it's unwanted exposure. It's unwanted exposure. It's not gonna benefit the image whatsoever. In fact, it kind of degrades the image when you have too much scatter. So how does this happen? Well, you have to have just the right amount of force to knock out the outer shell electron, correct? So. Compton interactions are gonna increase, they're gonna increase when you increase your KVP. Okay, so I know it's KV, but I still have a bad habit of writing down KVP. I'm an older tech. So KV, as you increase it, you're gonna have more powerful x-rays, more energy behind the photons, and it's gonna, it's gonna kick out those outer shell electrons. So as you increase KVP, you're gonna have an increase of Compton interactions. You're gonna have more x-rays going through the object as well, and you're gonna end up with more scatter. All right, so again, Compton is not gonna help benefit the image. If anything, it's gonna produce a lot of noise, a lot, a lot of low-level x-ray signals are gonna be recorded by the detector, and that's not gonna be good for the image. It kind of degrades the image because you have all these unwanted little speckles of signal being recorded, all right? So this is Compton, right? So outer shell electron, Compton effect. I don't know if I could say this, but I think about straight out of Compton, okay? Outer shell electron, Compton effect. That's what helps me. If it's offensive to people, I apologize, but that's what's helped me for many, many years. All right, so I actually have the record. A student gave it to me. All right, so straight out of Compton, outer shell electron. That's how I remember it, okay? I had to remember that I couldn't play it when my kids were awake, so that's all I'm gonna say, all right? My wife's like, hey, and I'm like, oh, sorry. So. Outer shell electron, right? Compton effect. Now, photoelectric. Now look what I'm gonna do here, you guys. Instead of saying photoelectric effect, I'm gonna say photoelectric absorption. So there's a reason why I have you write that down. Photoelectric absorption, because guess what? When you have attenuation, it's gonna be through the photoelectric effect, correct? So with the photoelectric effect, it's an interaction with matter. You're gonna have the primary beam come down. It's gonna interact. I'm just gonna draw a patient, it's gonna be bigger. <laughs> and it's gonna interact with the atoms of the body. All right? So you have all these atoms inside your body. Now, photoelectric effect. You're gonna have an incident photon. An incident photon. It's gonna interact with an inner shell electron. An inner shell electron is gonna be ejected. So in the textbook, it says K shell for sure, right? But in the book, it says K or L. It can happen with either one. So it interacts with an inner shell electron, and in your book, it says K or L. Those are considered to be your inner shell electrons. Technically, K is, right, but again, those are the interactions that are gonna most likely result in a photoelectric effect. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this for a second. So now, 
Here's your incident photon. It's gonna knock out, it's gonna eject an inner shell electron, we said, correct? So what it's gonna do is, it's gonna produce what's called a photoelectron. That's the byproduct. I've had students tell me that, oh, Mr. M, I got it wrong on, that, on the test or the quiz. I didn't think the answer was gonna be that, right? Well, number one, you gotta be doing your reading. And number two, sometimes we think it's gotta be more difficult than that, right? But guess what? The photoelectric absorption or effect is gonna produce a photoelectron. So it ejects the inner shell electron. Now, when it does that, it's gonna leave a vacancy. Okay, so there's a vacancy that's created. A vacancy is created. Okay. <clears throat> there's three things in the textbook that says what's most likely to cause a electric effect. Go ahead and read that. If anybody has questions, you can reach out to me. But it's three basic things. If you increase the energy right behind the photon to knock out the inner shell electron, that's one of them. If you increase the KVP, you're going to have less photoelectric. You're going to have more Compton, so I'll write that on the board. But just go through those three small items. Now, a vacancy is created. And guess what? Guess what's going to happen? The outer shell electrons, they're like, hey, I want that spot, right? So the, the outer shell electrons are going to jump to fill that space. So I'll put the outer shell electrons are going to move into the vacancy. And guess what, the, what they're going to do? So let's say the K shell gets ejected. Well, guess what? The L says, hey, I want that spot. So an electron from the L shell says, I'm going to take that spot. And then the M says, hey, I want the L spot, right? So the M is gonna jump, the outer shell electron on the M level is gonna say, I want that L spot. And then the N is gonna wanna jump into that vacancy as well. So that is called characteristic radiation that it's producing, but the event that's creating characteristic radiation is known as, starts with a C as well, cascading. That's right. So you're gonna have <clears throat> all these other electrons jumping, and we call that cascading. So the cascading is the event, and the radiation that it's producing, it's going to be known as characteristic radiation because it's related to the differences in energy between, guess what, the energy levels, correct? So this characteristic radiation now is going to be absorbed because it's not very, not very high energies, and because the tissue densities are so high in atomic number, they're going to absorb the radiation. Okay, so we have cascading. We have characteristic radiation being produced. And then guess what? We have absorption of that energy. So it doesn't leave the body. So the radiation is produced through the cascading effect, but guess what? Because the atomic densities are so high, the atomic numbers are higher, it's not gonna allow those, ele those energies to leave. So now we have total absorption of energy. And that's why I put here photoelectric absorption instead of just putting photoelectric effect because I want you to think about photoelectric ooh, absorption. Compton, scatter, right? So I have here the key words. We have an incident photon is going to interact with an inner shell electron, usually the K shell. It's going to eject it, create a photoelectron. It's going to create a vacancy. The vacancy has to be filled, right? The outer shell electrons are gonna to wanna to move into that vacancy, and when they do that, they're like leapfrogging, right? They're moving, and when they do that, they're creating energy, especially at the atomic level, right? Again, that's gonna be radiation. That's gonna be secondary radiation as well, but it's called characteristic radiation. But the radiation is gonna be absorbed, and that's where you have absorption. So now, guess what? We said the Compton effect doesn't have any diagnostic value, but guess what? the photoelectric does. And that's gonna provide us contrast on the image. So, I'm gonna put here, you guys, the diagnostic, or photoelectric effect has diagnostic value. Why? Because it absorbs, that's gonna give you a radiopaque object. And whatever is not absorbed is gonna go right through, that's radiolucent. So now you have the gray or white from the radiopaque object, and now you have the black from the radiolucent areas, now you have a differences between the exposure levels, differences between black and white, and that's gonna be known as contrast. So, 
contrast, especially coming from the patient, subject contrast, go back to the contrast video, right? Subject contrast is now gonna be related to the patient because of the differences in varying tissues, you're gonna have different rates of, guess what? Attenuation, differential absorption, differential attenuation, differences in exposure levels. You're gonna have differences in black and white, that's contrast. So if you ever asked a question, which interaction with matter provides us a diagnostic value to our image, it's the photoelectric absorption because of absorption, all right? Now, I'm just gonna honorably mention coherent. Coherent, you guys, is generally not ionizing. Coherent is gonna be where you have a very low energy level, and it's usually not within the diagnostic range of x-ray because it has to be below like 50 kV. So it's not really gonna happen unless another interaction causes it to happen. But with coherent, you have an incident photon strike the atom, but it's very low energy, and it's not enough to knock out an electron, so there's really no ionization with coherent. It's known as unmodified scatter. So think about that term, coherent, unmodified scatter. So it's not gonna be ionizing, all it does is vibrate. It's like, you know, a, a car that's bumping with bass in their car, and it causes your car alarm to go off on your car. That car driving by with the bass and the music in the car had large vibrations, it didn't hit your car, but it was enough to cause your car alarm to go off, correct? That's what coherent would be like. The interactions are gonna be happening, but very minimal, um, not really in the diagnostic range of x-ray. So coherent, unmodified scatter, non-ionized, right? No, it's not gonna be ionizing, non-ionizing. And it's just a vibration of the atom. And when the atom vibrates, it releases that energy, but then again, that energy is absorbed. So I just wanted to mention it, right? But again, the number one interaction that's gonna happen throughout the diagnostic range of x-ray is Compton all the time. And who's the number one source of Compton interactions? The patient, right? Now, photoelectric is gonna be good because it gives us diagnostic value of contrast. But again, we'll learn this in next quarter. Um, most of your absorption of energy is the photoelectric, right? So guess what? Most of patient dose is gonna be the result of full electric effect, but we'll keep that for another video, another lecture that we're doing. But again, guys, I'm, helping, I'm hoping this is gonna help you uh, understand the difference between full electric and Compton. Again, it's very short, it's very to the point, but again, we're hitting all the key terms, and I hope this helps you. Thank you. Hello, everyone, you guys. Thank you very much for watching the videos. I'm hoping that they're helping you out. Please make sure that you subscribe and that you hit the notification bell to be notified about new videos. Again, remember to be good to yourself and be good to others. Thank you.